Let's talk about how the signal to noise ratio per bit is converted to the standard deviation for a Gaussian random number generator. This parameter is usually expressed in decibels and is also commonly pronounced as EBNO, even though the N sub zero is actually not NO. Also, the decibel expression is based on the 10 log 10 instead of the 20 log 10 that you're probably more familiar with from doing conversions with amplitudes and voltages and so forth. If I divide both sides of the equation by 10 and also let's uh, go ahead and keep the log base 10 in there. Uh, divide both sides of the equation by 10 and then use both sides of the equation as powers of 10. Then we can solve for the EBNO as a, a plane ratio. Now E sub E is the energy per bit, and it has units of joules per bit. And N sub zero is the one-sided power spectral density of thermal noise, and it's defined as KT where K is Boltzmann's constant and capital T is temperature expressed in degrees Kelvin. Thermal noise is prevalent in uh, any kind of electronic based signal processing chain. Now this ratio of EB to N0 in terms of its units would be joules per bit divided by N0, which has units simply of joules, because joules per Kelvin cancels out the Kelvin associated with temperature. So here we see the dimensionless ratio of uh, essentially unity per bit. So again, signal to noise ratio is a dimensionless ratio. So that's why this this ratio is specifically called signal to noise ratio per bit. And generally we look for larger values of EBNO as being better because that corresponds to a higher signal to noise ratio. Better signal quality also it could be expressed as lower noise. Now let's take a look at the thermal noise in a little bit more detail. The thermal noise power spectral density is very constant out to uh, many gigahertz. In fact, out to about a thousand gigahertz, it's almost totally uniform or one terahertz. So for most uh, practical electronics based communication systems, we can, uh, we can well model this thermal noise as simply pure ideal white noise. Now a sample data system with sampling frequency F sub S has uh, valid frequencies out to the Nyquist frequency of F sub S over two. Therefore our noise that fills this entire simulation spectrum then would be uniform from minus F sub S over two to positive F sub S over two. Now back on the units, for the two-sided version of this, we divide n and naught over two. I'll take care of that right there as well. And it turns out that the Gaussian random number generator can be expressed in terms of a variance, which is sigma squared, simply as this total distance which would be F sub S times the two-sided noise power spectral density, which would be N naught over two. Now, these pair of equations then ultimately can be solved by beginning with EBNO in dB, finding N sub zero from that expression, plugging n sub zero in right here, 
solving for the variance, and then taking the square root of that to get the standard deviation that you need.